All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another lecture in the series on structural dynamics. Today, we're talking about the responses of multi-DOF systems, and more specifically, we're discussing the modal superposition method. This is a very common method that's discussed in structural dynamic courses, and it's very basic. It's uh, super fundamental to the understanding of uh, these kinds of responses. So I think it's very important to focus on this. But to begin with, I like to talk about the concept of resonance. I'm drawing this multi-DOF, uh, or excuse me, a single DOF system, and it has a mass, it has uh, stiffness K, and it also has damping C. Now, this uh, SDOF system is subjected to an externally applied force PT. And so if I want to think about this mass in the context of a free body diagram, uh, which I'm drawing now, I can uh, draw all the forces that I'm observing. So I have a stiffness force, Fs. I have a damping force, Fd. I have uh, my inertial force, Fi, and I have my externally applied force, Pt. And so the question I want to ask is, what is resonance in the context of all these forces that I'm observing here? So we're defining resonance, or natural frequency. Resonance happens when the stiffness term, um, one shown here, and the inertial term have exact opposite phases and they cancel each other out and they have the exact same magnitude. So whenever these two equal to zero, resonance happens. And uh, if you're thinking about the response uh, in terms of all these forces, when Fi and Fs cancel each other out, then we only have damping to take care of the externally applied force. And if we don't have damping, there is nothing that can resist the externally applied force. And so um, this, uh, this mass, the single degree of freedom mass, will be subjected to uh, almost, uh, you can think of it as a free body motion uh, type of response, where it gets dragged on by this uh, force and it's unable to resist uh, in any way. And so this is what resonance is. And, uh, you know, if you remember, we could um, detail this in a different way. We could have KU plus MU dot dot is equal to zero. And really, if we don't have damping, there is no way to handle resonance. So why do I bring this up? Uh, there is a very good reason for it. Whenever we're dealing with multi-DOF systems, we can have uh, as many... Uh, different resonances as we have degrees of freedom. And with each of these degrees of freedom, uh, let's, let's actually draw a building here. Uh, with each of these degrees of freedom, we're going to have a shape that's associated with uh, that particular resonance condition. So let's see. All right. So this is my two-story building, and uh, this is my ground floor, so let's say I have degrees of freedom U1 and U2, and I have M1, M2, and all these parameters, you know, stiffness 1, stiffness 2, damping 1 and 2. Um, in a case like this, resonance exists uh, for uh, the two uh, degrees of freedom. So I have uh, omega 1, which is my first natural frequency or my first resonance, and I have omega 2, which is my second uh, natural frequency. Now, this uh, structure likes to move in a very particular way at these natural frequencies. And we call these mode shapes, um, and I'll show you what mode shapes look like for each of these two modes. For the first mode, we typically have 
uh, the structure swaying left and right. So we have the first mass and the second mass, and our structural system pretty much uh, sways back and forth between these two dashed lines. So we go this way and this way for a two-dimensional uh, structural system. <clears throat> and for the second mode, it's going to be a little different. It tends to, the structure tends to uh, cross this middle axis and we end up with something that looks uh, somewhat like that. And um, the motion is typically symmetric and uh, again the masses move in this particular way. So we call this uh, mode shapes and uh, mode shapes are uh, indicated by phi's. So we have phi or phi 1 and phi 2. And we have mode 1 and we have mode 2. And so whenever we hit the natural frequency, the first one, the structural system is going to look like this. It's going to move in this manner. And whenever we hit the second natural frequency, uh, the, the two-story structure that we have here is going to move in this way, in this manner. So how do we obtain these omega ones and these uh, phi's? So we have uh, our MDOF systems, multi-degree of freedom systems. Uh, in this case, we have a structural system that is a two-story building. And what we can do is to do um, the following. We are able to obtain from the parameters we have uh, we can obtain our eigenvalues, which turn out to be our natural frequencies, omega 1. Um, let's call it omega n, because we can have n many degrees of freedom. And we have our eigenvectors, which happen to be our mode shapes. And we're going to call this phi n. So now if I'm thinking about the response of my MDOF system, I have my response ut, that is my displacement, is equal to, uh, we call this qnt, and um, this q is the response of each of the modes, and n is the identifying index for each of the modes. Multiplied by phi n, or phi n, excuse me. And phi n is obviously the uh, shape of the mode. So we call it mode shape. So if I'm thinking about the response uh, for a single degree of freedom system um, and we're interested in the response for uh, free body, free by, uh, or free vibration uh, in the undamped case, uh, we typically end up with a response that looks like this. We have a n cosine omega n t plus uh, the sine term. So we have bn sine omega nt. So this is the response uh, of a single mode. And uh, in a two degree of freedom system, we're going to have two of these responses. In a, or in a three degree of freedom system, we're going to have three of these responses. So this is just one of these, one of these uh, responses. And so uh, I can express ut, which is my actual deformation response, as phi n multiplied by qn, which in um, the last page we described as follows. And um, 
In a situation like this, typically our omega, which is our natural frequency, and our phi, which is our mode shape, these guys are unknowns. And our interest in uh, our interest is in identifying what these values are because uh, once we find them, we can solve uh, this equation and obtain what our responses are for a multi-degree of freedom system. And so what I want to do now is to plug this equation that I'm highlighting with the star into my uh, equation of motion. So I have a matrix M multiplied by a vector U dot dot plus matrix K multiplied by vector U is equal to zero. So I plug this into here. And what I end up getting is omega N squared minus M phi N plus K um, phi N. And we have QNT is equal to zero. So that's what we have. <clears throat> and so you can think about this as uh, these parameters as uh, vectors. Uh, these are all vectors. And you can think about uh, these mass and stiffness terms as matrices. So clearly, the response of the modes are not equal to zero. So I can say this cannot equal to zero. And so when I'm doing the algebra, I can focus on this left bracket and pretty much say that k minus omega n squared m phi n has to equal to zero. If you recall from your matrix algebra courses, so from algebra, we had a, this expression where we said for any matrix A and the eigenvectors of that matrix um, expressed as V, we have its eigenvalues lambda multiplied by the eigenvectors. Uh, so what we can do is we can assume this is A, and we can identify what the eigenvectors and uh, eigenvalues of uh, this uh, mass stiffness structural system are going to be. Um, since uh, the time, the duration of this uh, lecture is limited, uh, I'm not going to do this, um, the mathematics that goes into that. Uh, instead, what I can tell you is uh, MATLAB has this function that allows you to obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. And it's pretty much eig, and you can plug in your k matrix and your m matrix, put a comma in between, and it will give you um, all those uh, parameters. So the question now is, what is modal superposition? So now we're interested in modal superposition and how it's going to help us uh, with the responses of NDOF systems. So modal superposition, what it does is it takes an NDOF system, so it takes a system that can have any number of degrees of freedom, it's an NDOF system, and it creates this surrogate uh, 1DOF system for each of the modes. So it creates a 1DOF system for each of the modes. Uh, and uh, so instead of us having to calculate the response of a multi-degree of freedom system, we're able to calculate single degree of freedom systems and add their responses together. And thus the term modal superposition. We're superimposing the responses of a bunch of SDOF systems. And together these uh, SDOF systems um, pretty much uh, describe the motion of the multi-degree degree of freedom system. And so we can have um, n minus 1. And lastly, 
and single degree of freedom systems. So these are SDOF. SDOF. So that's what we have. Now, there is going to be mathematics that goes into uh, identifying these SDOF systems. And now we need to think about how to go from a multi-degree of freedom system to a bunch of single degree of freedom systems. To do this, we need to generate what we refer to as modal mass, damping, and stiffness matrices. So what is a modal matrix? Modal matrices are diagonal uh, matrices, and uh, in the case of the modal dam, uh, uh, excuse me, modal stiffness matrix uh, identified with the M, I have phi transposed K phi, and we end up getting a matrix that is diagonal. So we've pretty much converted our um, our matrix. K, we have pretty much converted our multi-degree freedom system into a bunch of single DOF systems. And these are all zeros. Now we can do the same thing with the mass matrix. So we have mass matrix that is modal. We have uh, phi, T, M, and phi. Now all these phi's are matrices. Um, so, you know, these are phi's. Uh, that include uh, phi 1, phi 2, and you can have phi n. These are n by n matrices, and of course k and m are n by n matrices. And pretty much you can do the same thing for the damping matrix, and you would have uh, cm is equal to phi transposed c phi normal. So that's what we would have. And because these are diagonal, we can easily identify what the natural frequencies of our system are. So we have Kn square is equal to, um, excuse me, there's no square here. Kn is equal to omega n square multiplied by the mass um, uh, squared. And these are m's. And so if you want to think about this in terms of the equation of motion, in the past we have had uh, the following. We have had a mass matrix, uh, this vector, and the rest of the equation of motion. And now we are incorporating the uh, phi's. So we're getting uh, phi transposed, m phi u dot dot plus phi transposed c phi plus phi transpose k phi and there's a u here and lastly these whole, this whole thing is equal to phi transposed uh, multiplied by the force so we had this equation of motion which belonged to that of a multi degree freedom system and now we have a bunch of equations of motion for single DOF systems that resemble this multi-degree of freedom system. So let's do an example. We are given this three DOF system, three degrees of freedom, and uh, with this three degree of freedom system, I have the following degrees of freedom. I got U1, U2, and U3. And I know in the past, we've identified degree, degrees of freedom the other way around, uh, going or counting from down up. Uh, this time, we're going to uh, do it this way, just uh, because it doesn't really matter. And uh, we're going to identify... Uh, the parameter is as follows. Uh, this system is going to be undamped, so we're only dealing with stiffness and mass. And this is kips per inch, so this is our imperial units. 
and I hope those of you who uh, don't live in the U.S. aren't bothered by um, this uh, the system that I'm using. And so we have uh, K3, and K3 is equal to uh, 1800. So the building is getting gradually stiffer as we go down, and this is really how buildings are designed. And so we have uh, mass 1 is equal to 1, kips, second, squared, uh, divided by inches. And we could say mass 2 is equal to m, and mass 3 is also equal to, uh, or excuse me, mass 2 is equal to 2, and mass 3 is also equal to 2. So that's what we have. And the forces that this uh, three-story building um, experiences is a vector, also three by one, and it's described as uh, 100 multiplied by cosine omega t. Um, so we have a sinusoidal force that is getting applied at each of the stories at each of the degrees of freedom, and the units for this are kips. The first thing I want to do is to identify my stiffness and mass matrices. And let's not forget, by the way, this is an undamped system. This is undamped, so we're not dealing with uh, stiffness parameters or anything. Okay, so let's identify our uh, matrices. So for K, I have 600, minus 600, zero. hundred minus twelve hundred okay that's our stiffness matrix and the units are if I remember correctly kips per inch and I can also do the same for my mass matrix and I would have zero one zero 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 two zero 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 two and the units for this would be kips seconds squared over inches So what I can now do is to go on MATLAB and say, give me my phi's, my mold shapes, and give me my eigenvalues squared. Uh, MATLAB is going to give you your omegas uh, squared, just because that's the way it's going to work. And um, we use the function eig k m. And so we get the following. We have phi is equal to 1.686.314. This is a matrix. Uh, this is really our first mode shape. So um, if I have a 3D of system, uh, the first mode shape looks kind of like that. It's mode one. And then uh, I can look at my second mode shape, minus, or excuse me, 1, uh, minus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5. And so if I'm thinking about my mode shape, it is going to look like that. And with the top being 1, and here the top value is also 1. And lastly, I have my third mode. Remember, we have a 3D OF system. We're going to have three modes. So if you're thinking about these commercially available softwares um, and you're designing buildings on them, you can have thousands and thousands of modes. So, so um, the computational tools that are uh, inside those softwares are just fantastic. It's really amazing what they do with those softwares. And so we have mode two, mode three, and our mode shape will uh, look like that. One trick that I usually use 
I don't know if it holds true for all structural systems or not, is that uh, our mode shape tends to cross the central axis uh, depending on what the mode shape is, or what the mode number is. So for the second mode, uh, for the first mode, it never crosses. For the second mode, there is one crossing, and for the third mode, uh, there is two crossings. Okay, and so uh, we also get these uh, parameters. Omega one squared is equal to uh, one eighty eight point thirty two. Omega two squared is nine hundred, and lastly, omega three squared is equal to nineteen one one point seven. So now, what I want to do is to identify my modal matrices. So I have a modal mass matrix, which is phi transpose. Oh, excuse me, that's an ugly phi. So we have phi transposed m phi, and we get the following diagonal matrix: 2.14, 2, 3.14, 2, 3.04. Those are diagonal matrix, and we get the following uh, modal stiffness matrix and so we have uh, phi transposed k phi and that gives us another diagonal matrix 1800 and we got 5811.7 so if you're thinking about the method of modal superposition what this is really giving us is a bunch of uh, stof systems where the first one has a mass 2.14, the second has a mass 2, and then the last one has a 3.04, and the stiffnesses are uh, as shown here. We got the 402.7, we got the 1800 here, and we got the 5811 here. And so the responses of these three single degree of freedom modes combined give us the response of the multi degree of freedom system, thus the method of modal superposition. All right, the last thing I want to do is to do the superposition of my forces, uh, or excuse me, the, the transformation of my forces. So I say FR is equal to uh, phi transposed PT. PT was a 3 by 1 vector, so FR is also going to be 3 by 1. So we have 200, 0, 62.8 is what we have. Okay, and there's a cosine omega t, and the units of this are kips. All right, now we want to take our memories back a couple of lectures and think about the steady state responses of harmonic systems. If you recall, we had a solution that had the following structure. So we had P naught over KN, N uh, here stands for the moat number. Excuse me, let's do a straight line. Here we go. And we had the following 1 minus omega squared. Omega is the excitation frequency, and we have omega N squared. This omega is the natural frequency. And this was multiplied by cosine omega t. And so I can apply this to my MDOF system and I can say q1 is equal to, uh, I'll plug in those parameters, p0 is 100, uh, 0 0.497, and I get 1 minus omega squared, omega 1 squared. I don't really need to plug those in, but you could do it um, on your own. Uh, so that's what we have. Q2t ends up equaling to 0, and Q3t is as follows. 0 0.0108. You're noticing that oh, as the mode number increases, the amplitude of the response is also decreasing. So 
that's telling you that the first couple of modes are always the most important. So if you have a really, really build, build, big building or um, any kind of other uh, structural system, uh, the first couple modes are the most important, typically. But sometimes uh, those uh, higher up modes can result in instabilities, uh, predominantly local instabilities, and those are uh, also important to consider. And so our response is equal to ut phi qt. And so we plug everything in and we get the following. 0.497 1 minus oops omega squared omega 1 squared cosine omega t plus 0 that's the contribution of the second mode and we have 0 0.0 0 0339 and I'm hoping I've done this correctly. If I haven't, please um, let me know. Leave me a leave me a notification in the comment section, and hopefully I can fix it as soon as I can, or at least uh, let everyone know. Okay, here it is. Uh, this is the response of my multi-degree of freedom system, and this last equation, this last part, is where we're really uh, superimposing the responses of the three. Uh, single degree of freedom systems to find the response of the total bigger multi-degree of freedom system. Okay, I hope uh, you found this lecture useful. Uh, again, leave any comments, feedbacks, questions in the comments section, and hopefully I can uh, get back to you. All right, I'll see you next time.